Hey guys, how's it going? Well, I'm back home and I have an opportunity to actually sit down and do a video. <clears throat> so I was grabbing a little bowl of soup and I was trying to catch up on some comments and some videos. And I had some conversations, I told you guys about them this weekend, I had some conversations with some people. <clears throat> Here's the result of those conversations. And I'm not going to say any names, you can see them on the screen. But this is the type of mentality we're dealing with out there. And it's funny because they take what they're doing and throw it on me and accuse me of doing the same thing when it's com clearly the opposite. So here's this one. Uh, Mr. Christian still spreading lies about me, huh? I don't put anyone above Christ just sticking up for a real Christian. This is the one that was talking about Pius Pio. Uh, buy lie spreader. Oh, and fasting comes in handy. You should try it. Now they're judging me by my weight. Okay. Oh, good, Terry, go away. You're one of them, too. So, first of all, I've already covered this in a video. I am overweight because I have a connective tissue disease. My body is breaking down. I just spent all weekend, it took me all weekend, two and a half, almost three days, to hang two gates because of the pain that I'm in. I can't exercise like other people do. And it's funny because this bowl of soup, I think I had... I had one other bowl of soup today besides this. That's all I've eaten today. Most of you eat more for breakfast than I eat all day. It's not about the food. The weight is because of health problems. So please, absolutely judge me by visual cues. Go read 1 Samuel 16 or 19, whatever it was. That shows where your heart is. So, and how am I spreading lies? This is a conversation between me and you. If I was spreading lies, I'd go put it in other people's comment sections. I guess I, you could count that as me doing it now since I'm doing a video showing your name on it. Good luck with that. The Lord rebuke you for your heresy and your lies and your hatred. I'm a little upset. I'm a little aggravated because I'm tired of this stuff. This is constantly going on and I'm not going to deal with it. I'm going to go into my, um, my comments and I'm going to shadow ban you. Let's see, who else? There was one other one. Here we go. There she is. So here's, well, my friend, I had left you with a challenge, which she didn't, to prove your spiritual maturity. Sister, go watch my thousand videos. But I guess you thought you would end this conversation by letting the scriptures speak for themselves. I didn't end the conversation. By doing this, leaving literal verses without spiritual interpretation shows you are letting pride end the conversation. Is it pride to put your understanding of the meaning of the word or the definition of the word ahead of the, tr of the word itself? God made this to be subject to literal interpretation so the simplest among us would be able to be saved. Yet you think because you're, you understand certain definitions and you go test the definition of everything, which by the way, over the last 2,000 years, the definitions of words have changed multiple times, you think that makes you a better Christian than other people. Other people. The Lord rebuke you for your lies and heresy and your pride. Because you being able to read a definition of a word does not mean you understand the scripture better than anyone else. The scripture is meant to be taken literally. Those who are able to mature as the spirit gives are able to go into the deeper meanings. Not every Christian will be able to do this because it's not given to them to do that. So if that's what you think, and you think you can self-elevate for that, I tell you when you see the rapture happen and you're standing here on this earth looking at it happen, good luck. Or if you're standing in front of him having to give an account for why you look down on your brethren because of this, good luck. Get your excuse ready. Let's see what else you had to say. Satan fell from pride. It is his way. He has set up the world to follow him in this. The statement I was looking for you to come back with is how we test the spirits spiritually. So you already had a preconceived idea of how I was going to answer this question. And that was what you were going to gain my spiritual maturity on. You're self-elevating. Your pride is getting in the way of your ability to understand the point I was trying to make with you. 1 John 4, 1, 3, spiritually interpreted. A false worker of light can quote the literal verse all day long if needed to convince the believer it is trying to to fool. What if it's trying to save them? So now a literal interpretation or a literal reading of the word is trying to fool somebody they're trying to get to believe? Instead of us trying to reach them? Because they don't understand it liter or, or uh, 
in any other way other than literally. So we're trying to help them get saved by giving them spiritual milk. You need to get on spiritual meat or you need to grow up. Matter of fact, grow up and go sit in the corner and be quiet and let the adults do this because you don't know what you're doing. Go away. What else? Uh, a false worker, let's see, um, convince the believer it is trying to fool. It is the Holy Spirit sent from God. Let me see if I understand what you're saying here. It is the Holy Spirit sent from God. The words, Jesus Christ came in the flesh, is literal, therefore, of pride, Satan's way. So Jesus didn't come in the flesh. You just proved you're a demon. Because the scriptures say that no demon can, can proclaim Jesus came in the flesh. You just prove you're a demon. You think wording it that way is going to confuse me. Go sit down. The Lord rebuke you for your heresy and your evil and your desires. The Lord rebuke you for your lies and your misunderstandings. The Lord rebuke you for the division you're trying to cause. Go sit down somewhere and be quiet. We don't have time for you. You just literally, in that statement right there, just prove that you're a demon. So demons can quote Bible verses as much as needed. No, they can't. After all, they know the literal scriptures better than any of us do. But they will not, cannot say the spiritual interpretation of 1 John 4, 2 or 3. Is that where your faith is? Is your faith in your understanding of 1 John 4, 2, 3? Or is it in God's truth about it? Don't like that I'm mad? Go, I don't care. Even though they know it, they won't say it. You are simply unaware of it. If you are being led by a false one, he won't make the statements. If you are being led in our conversation by the real Holy Spirit of God, you would answer love to you and yours. Keep your love and keep your blessings. I don't want them. Don't say stuff like that and then touch, but I love you. That doesn't make it all right. That doesn't make what you're saying true. You're self-justifying. Go sit down and be quiet. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for you. When you're standing in hell suffering, good luck. Who else? Who else? Oh, here, this one. This one here. Let me get another one up here. We're going to fix this stuff right now. Read your scripture again. These men handled the situation very poorly and treated it more like a game. If you firmly believe that Jesus lives in you, capitalization intended for emphasis, then you totally get how you can stand against demons. Right, I have actually battled them face to face, contrary to what your small and limited understanding may believe. We treat Christianity like we're in a 12-step process. When who, who, did, who said that? When was that ever said? No, nowhere. You came up with that. Like AA, to be ready to heal the sick and cast out demons. No. I've only offered... Three healings in my entire life. And I've only cast out a couple of demons because that's the only opportunity I've ever had. So your whole idea that you have is completely blown out of the water. Hogwash. We have that capability immediately. No, we do not. If you start out on spiritual milk, you are not ready. And by judging by your comments and our conversation we've had over the weekend, you are not ready. I feel sorry for you if you engage a demon. When I approach people about Jesus, I start out speaking of his power, and I stay focused on that. You either believe what the Bible says or you don't. Jesus did not speak of doing things in step-up plans. Hey, either you believe the Bible or don't, you need to go talk to Terry, because Terry says if you believe the Bible literally, you're wrong. I need to get these two. <laughs> I need to get these two together and let them argue it out. You either believe what the Bible says or you don't. Jesus did not speak of doing things in a step-up plans. You're right, he didn't. But the scriptures do say we have to grow as a Christian. He only said, believe. We have been conditioned to spread out things over time, but living in the spiritual realm doesn't work like that. You don't live in the spiritual realm. None of us do. We haven't been redeemed yet. You need to go read your scriptures. To spread a spiritual realm doesn't work like that. Time is irrelevant. Time is irrelevant over there, not here where we and you are at right now. Go sit down somewhere and be quiet. I have heard so many stories from people who were not even believers yet, but got caught in a situation with an entity and used Jesus' name and overcame the entity. True, the power is contained within the name, but a believer with no faith 
cannot be successful by using it. We haven't achieved that point yet. We achieve the entity they were dealing with was didn't wasn't real. They lied to you if that that's what they told you. A non-believer with no faith cannot invoke the name of Jesus at this point in time and be successful against a demon. They cannot. Please try to prove it to me. Well, you're not going to be able to because I'm going to shadow ban you. You have to have faith in order for that stuff to work properly. That's why the scriptures say if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain to move and it'll move. See, you're not reading the scriptures. And you're not listening to what's being said in those scriptures. God is almighty and all-powerful and said he would move a mountain with faith the size of a mustard seed. No, he did not. It said if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can move the mountain. Tell that mountain to move and it'll be moved. You need to read your scriptures again. Use his name and his words and stand. Period. Have faith in Christ unconditionally and trust him for everything, for your salvation. Period. Stop looking at yourself for faith. Moral high horse much? I can't even see you guys. You're so high up on your moral high horse. Let's see. Here's this one again. Mr. Christian, you misrepresented what I said to fit your narrative. Bye, Mr. Christian. Bye, Felicia. I have nothing to say to you guys. It's ridiculous. Hold on. There was another comment. Evidently, they weren't done talking. Here we go. Nice talking to you. Spelled that wrong. <laughs> Fat finger, sorry. So, you can see it on the screen. Can you see it on the screen? There we go. Now you see it. I'm not dealing with this. Uh, this is childish. It is childish. Let's see what this one has to say. Ooh, I'm getting told, guys. Mr. Christian, you say Pio is my hero. Yeah, because you came to his defense when clearly that type of stigmata is a lie. And that I put him above Christ because I believe the stigmata was from God. Just go on with your life, man. We disagree. Just let it go. I put no one above God. I was sticking up for Pyle like you'd stick up for that Tim fellow. I don't stick up for Tim. When have you guys ever heard me stick up for Tim? I've defended him. I've, I've supported him with a supporting video. I don't stick up for Tim. He stands on his, by himself. Uh, you can't read my heart or my mind. Let it go. So either these people are demons, now you can read what I put, these people are demons, or they're being influenced by demons. Now a lot of people have talked about over the weekend, I didn't get to respond it except for, well, for one of them, a lot of people talk over the weekend uh, that it, um, well there's no way that a, a, a born again believer can be controlled by a demon. Wrong. They cannot be possessed by a demon because there's already a Holy Spirit within them. And the two can't, con can't contend for the same space. But they can be influenced. 
even though you're a believer, especially if you're on spiritual milk, you can be led into demonic coercion, and they can lead you into... That's why there's Christians sitting in churches that are doing holy laughing. Born-again believers. That's why there's Christians sitting in churches playing with Ouija boards and tarot cards. That's why there's Christians sitting in churches spouting gibberish that means nothing and has no meaning, and a lot of them are even faking it just to fit in. That's why they're supposed Christians uh, working these churches, making millions and millions of dollars, and not helping anyone with it. Absolutely, demons can coerce Christians. Where is your faith? Is your faith in Christ? Is your faith in God? Is your faith in His truth? Or your own understanding? Or your interpretation? Or your ability to be holy and righteous? You can't be holy. You can't be righteous. It is Christ's righteousness imputed onto you. It is Christ's holiness imputed onto you. Oh, please, come at me again. I will unload on you guys like you wouldn't believe. The Lord rebuke you for your heresy and lies. Rebuke you for your division and your faithlessness. The Lord rebuke you in all points. You can't move me. I won't be moved. I know what the truth is because I can read and I can comprehend what I read. And I know how to use Google and I can look up anything I want. But God didn't intend it to be that way. That's for people who, are, who have that ability and that aptitude. The Holy Spirit works with them individually. It's not all about you. It's not all about what you know. It's not your way. So while you're way up there on that moral high horse, you need to realize that's as far as you're going to go up. The only place from there is down. So grow up. Go sit down somewhere, be quiet, and grow up. You guys are idiots. You've either been, become self-deceived or deceived by someone else. You won't win in this conversation with me. That's not pride. That's truth. Go ask all the other people. I've shadow banned. I've shadow banned 150 something people. I'm not. It's not because they disagree with me. Because they're wrong. Pius Pio may have been a Christian, but I can't see into his heart. But that stigmata he had on his hand, I just did part two on the stigmata video. That stigmata he had on his hand was not from God. The people of this generation seek for a sign, but no sign will be given to them other than Moses and the prophets. Sound familiar? You need to read your scripture. There are no prophets now. There were prophets when Jesus died until about 500 years later. Because at that time there were no Holy Spirit filled believers. After 500 years, there was a bunch of them. There were no more need for prophets to lead people. Because the Holy Spirit gave them prophetic utterance. Read the Bible, it's in there. Who needs to read their scriptures? Who needs to study? Who needs to drop their pride? You do. Because you have not read like I've read. Go watch, go watch a tenth of my thousand videos. Go watch Barry's videos. Go watch Tim's videos. Go watch Katie did's videos. David Benjamin, Diamond Dust of Vacation. Go watch all those guys, all those people's videos. But when you do, you need to prepare yourself and be ready to be convicted and ready to be proven wrong. And when you are, accept it and walk a more righteous path because that's the only way you're going to get yourself out of trouble. Because right now, you are denying the power of Christ. If you're putting all your faith in a definition or you're putting all of your understanding in some Catholic somewhere that had marks on his hands, which are very easily faked. You got problems. I'm not doubting your salvation at all. I'm just pointing out some very interesting facts and some very interesting realities that you need to address between you and him. Because the only way you get to... Oh, yeah, there was another one. Oh, I didn't even see her comment. I forgot about her comment. She said that the Bible doesn't say that Jesus is the only way to heaven. What? Are you serious? So I quoted a scripture. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And you know what her response was? No one comes to the Father but through him, but he didn't say heaven. The Father is heaven. What is wrong with you? There's something seriously wrong with people like that. So let me send that comment. And let me go find that comment. Y'all love this. Where is that at? Mm, was it Terry? Maybe it was Terry. Let me look. You know what? And they're going to get mad because I did this? I don't care.
Here's the definition one. Definition means meaning. No, it does not. Words have a specific definition, but depending on the culture and the language you're using that word in, it has a different meaning. Go to Iraq and use some of our language there and watch how quick you get your ass kicked. Uh... Oh yeah, they were trying to call it a, a demonic presence, uh, demonic uh, presence of a false Holy Spirit. Where is that other comment? It was amazing. I mean, when I read that, I was like, "Are you serious?" I can't I believe you just said that to me. Maybe it was this one. Yeah, y'all saw that. I commented that comment there. I actually did a video on that earlier. Today, I think. Uh, yeah, it's poor. Yeah, they handled it poor. They didn't have any faith. Uh, oh, come on. I can't. Where is it at? It was amazing to me. I did not misrepresent what you said. You said it very clearly what your intentions are. Stay with me, guys. Well, the Holy Spirit and demons aren't working on that person. The Holy Spirit indwells and the demons work on them. Uh, come on, where is it at? Rightly dividing. Oh, yeah. All the, I know what these people's problem is. Uh, they need... Uh, They need a sackcloth and ashes package from Pastor So and So. Oh, here it is, right here. This one, right here. I couldn't believe when I read this. Actually, the scripture does not say that Christ is the only way to heaven. It says that he is the only way to the Father, as in his throne of grace. The veil is torn, removed, and we, believers in Christ, have unlimited access. No, we do not. You have to wait for the day of redemption. In the Old Covenant, only the high priest had access after he ceremoniously, ceremonially cleaned himself once a year. The second resurrection of Revelation, of Revelation 20 and Daniel 12 will be after the millennium and are for those under the law. No, it's for those who died without Christ. You need to read your scriptures better. Some will be raised to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt. They are not judged by their faith in Christ, but by their works. Right, they are judged by their works. But none of them had faith in Christ. These were, it's people that lived under the law that didn't believe in the coming Messiah and everyone else who denied Christ. Uh, which is a condition of the Old Covenant. I also believe it is for those... Wait, what? They are not judged by their faith in Christ, but by their works. Which is a condition of the Old Covenant. No, I did the video on the Old Testament way of salvation. It was still faith. It was always faith. I also believe it is for those who lived and died before the law covenant was ever given. Right, because the... Salvation covenant was given to Abraham 430 years before the law. It's in your Bible, literally in your Bible. Even Job, who was before Abraham, knew about the coming Messiah. It's in the book of Job. Go read it. Moses knew about him. Oh, you people, God, give me a break, but I don't know. Of course you don't know. Acts 4.12 is talking about salvation, not eternal life. You know, and I'm only frustrated because I'm so tired and I'm so I'm in so much pain from wrestling with that those gates all weekend long. I have a I, like me sitting in this chair right now. I'm only going to move if I have to go to the bathroom or go to bed because it hurts so bad. I'm gonna try not to let this get in the way of my rational judgment. What do you think salvation is? What do you think you're being saved from and to? Oh my God. 
But see, this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with infants. We're dealing with people who have no understanding. Maybe you should familiarize yourself with what salvation actually means. Maybe you need to actually read what that says and stop making it about you and your understanding and make it about God's understanding. See, when you read the Bible, you don't twist the scripture to match your understanding. You twist your understanding to match scripture. <gasps> There's a concept that might work, right? It isn't the watered-down version that so many have come to understand it as today. It actually includes prosperity, no hell, and blessings in all area of lives of what? Who's J-O? Of what J-O-T? Who is J-O? Oh, no, you need to go away. I got to get you muted. Uh, and when you understand what the word salvation means, oh, here's another definition believer. Then when Jesus talks about the narrow gate that leads to life, you don't have to change it to eternal life. Where do you think you're going when you go through the gate? To eternal life. Oh my God, these people. Because you can then understand that he is talking about life here and now. No, he is not. The abundant life he promised. Oh no, this is a... a Prosperity. She, she's fallen under prosperity preaching. So few people find that road that leads to life. We know he is not talking about eternal life. And you, not me, because he did not say eternal life. He said life. But so many do not understand it, so they change it. This is why people don't, they claim to be Christian and think they're believers, and they don't. Always learning and learning, but denying the power thereof, and never, come, never coming to the full understand, understanding and faith in Christ. This is one right here. You're reading their comment. We also know he didn't mean... Whoop, I lost it. Uh, because you understand he's talking about life, the abundant life he promised. So few people find that road that leads to life. So you think that your great life where everything's going good, you're not having any problems or anything is because of him? Because there's a scripture that I shared recently that says those who wish to live a godly life will suffer tribulations and trials and pains and sufferings. Why? Because we're at enmity with the world. If you're friends with the world, if everything's going good in your life, you might need to reconsider where you're going. Because friends with the world is enmity with God. It's in the scriptures. Tell me to read my scriptures again. Where are we at? We know he is not talking about eternal life. That's all, that's all you. Because he did not say eternal life, he said life. But so many do not understand it, so they change it. No, we can apply it to other scripture and see that it's talking about eternal life. We also know he didn't mean eternal life because there will be an innumerable amount of people there from every tribe and tongue from all over the earth. That isn't a few, but many, many. No, actually, if you go to Daniel 7, I hope she's watching. If you go to Daniel 7, in fact, I'm going to link her this. Daniel 7 and Revelation 5, you can see a very specific number given for the people who will be taken in the rapture. 100 million plus a few million. And then you go to Revelation chapter 7 and see all the people coming out of the tribulation. And John says no one could number them. There were so many. You need to read your scriptures. The few that find this narrow gate and try to show others are persecuted by Christians of all people and ridiculed, mocked, and made fun of. I never mocked you or made fun of you. Those Christians have not found the narrow gate, but the wide gate that leads to sickness, disease, poverty, health. <laughs> uh, the justification train is just running over this. <laughs> Uh, the Christian not found the narrow gate, but the wide gate. That re I haven't read this comment in its entirety yet. Uh, poverty, death, and they... Th what? We're all going to die, stupid. And they think that when that destruction does come on them. They think it's God's will for them. No, I know it's not God's will for me. It's inevitable. Wow, talk about confusion. He is a good God, but he allows destruction in our life. No, my friend, I'm not your friend. We allow the destruction, not God. We allow the destruction by not fully embracing great. You are dumb as a brick. I cannot believe you are taking bits out of scriptures and putting them together and making a new scripture. But go ahead and be the accuser of the brethren. I'm not accusing anybody thinking that you are doing God's work. I'm not doing God's work. 
I think you didn't understand what manner of spirit you are of. What manner of spirit am I? Or what manner of spirit am I supposed to be, in your opinion? Look, the Bible stands on its own authority. Truth is truth. And the Bible says we compare... We Actually, I shut somebody else down earlier with, that, with this scripture. Precept upon precept, line upon line. If you want to rightly divide the scripture, you compare scripture to scripture. Because you're comparing truth to truth. And then everything else you find out there in the world, you compare to truth. But if you come up with your own idea of how it's supposed to be, or somebody's teaching, this is what you come up with, is this kind of junk right here. This is garbage. Wow. Wow. That's just, that completely blows me away. That, wow. Okay, so I need to Rand Soli. Remember I told you guys I write people's names down? There you go. And now we're going to go up here and get these other ones because they need to go to Morning Dove caught in the wire. I wonder why you got caught in a wire. False gospel. Got caught in the trap in the snares of life. Terry Sturgis. Anybody else that needed to that had some problems here that we needed to address? Uh, okay, so before I block them, I'm going to send them a link to this video and see what they think about that. I'm not trying to show off. I'm just pointing out the facts. The facts are contained within the scriptures. What's your problem? Uh, oh, Diamond, my buddy Diamond. Point out where I elevated. Whoops, wait a minute. Point out where I elevated myself. Be specific and take it as far as asking the Lord to rebuke me. Go ahead and provide me with my self-elevating quotes. Have a lovely evening and maybe open the Bible and read it. Watch a few of my thousand videos and tell me what you think. Now, right while that, while whoever that is is right in the middle of watching a video, that's when I'm going to shadow bend him and it'll cut it off. I got no time for this. I got no patience for this. We're supposed to have patience. You know what? This is ridiculous. Good morning, Diamond. How are you doing? Brother, walk away from them. If they're, they're obviously wearing you down, walk away. Take a break and get a refresher because this battle is only going to get worse before it gets better. <sighs> okay, guys. Well, anyway, I just wanted to pour over that. A little something different than I usually do. But you know what? If this is the kind of immaturity that we're going to have to deal with, I'm going to call it out. And if people don't like the fact that I'm embarrassing people on here, you shouldn't have a public YouTube account. You shouldn't comment publicly because this is public domain. I can share whatever comment and whatever material that I want, as long as it doesn't violate certain terms and conditions, which this does not. So, figure it out for yourself. And everything you guys are accusing me of, you did in your comments. Which is super ironic to me. Because all the things you can do is you have, I can go back through your comp, your hordes of comments and see bam, 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 and just start ticking off the list. I don't accuse anybody of anything. I can see quite clearly where you are. Now, what you guys didn't catch, because I did this earlier, is I rebuked a couple other people earlier, and they haven't commented back yet. Now, hopefully they don't, because it's just going to be shadow bans across the board. I'm not dealing with this. I'm not having these conversations. They go Nowhere. Now, I could list a ton of scriptures to these people. I actually already have. But it's not going to do any good. They have this idea in their head of what a Christian should be. Like the other person. Health and wealth. You should be living a good life and all that kind of stuff. Yet the scriptures clearly say anybody who is friends with the world is at enmity with God. That means you've got a problem. An enmity with the world is friends with God. So... If you're living your best life now, you got a problem. Not me, you. You need to deal with that. Because what's waiting for you on the other side isn't very nice. I don't know what it is. I can't judge or I can't say. But I can tell you according to Scripture what it says. 
Fix yourselves. Don't like it? I don't care. You may, if it made you mad, good. If it made you, if it offended you, good. If it hurt your feelings, good. You need your feelings hurt. You need to be offended. You need to get mad because there's a problem going on when you go after your brothers and sisters because of your ideas of what scripture should mean and you go after them yet when I go through those same comment sections and everybody asking for, for prayer I don't see a single one of you offering them prayer why are you not praying for your brothers and sisters like the scriptures you say you know told you to why aren't you out there trying to save the billions of people who are destined for hell right now why aren't you sharing scripture with them like the Bible that you say you know tells you to do. None of your channels have content. Right now, at this point in time, y'all are useless. Grow up. Until you grow up, go over there and sit in the corner. And be quiet and let the adults do this. Because the adults are the ones that are stepping out into the gap. That are making the intercessory prayer. That are sounding the alarm. That are getting the truth from the scripture out there in real life understanding as it applies to us and our lives individually. Because nothing that I read in any of your comments blesses anybody. And nobody commented back saying, wow, that really blessed me. Except for one, but I found out that when I went and checked that, that account, that person, it's a mirror account from one of those ones that were commenting. So they were commenting on their own comments, trying to make themselves look good. It's all BS, guys. It's all stupid stuff. So y'all go sit down and be quiet. I ain't got time for you. I'm going to drink my Diet Coke. I'm going to eat my soup. And before you tell me to lose weight, when you go to your brother's barbecue uh, in a couple of weekends, or when you go to that dinner party, or when you go over to, the, to hang out with the girls and have y'all are going to have some wine at a bridal shower, remember that if you have a little too much, that's gluttony too. Being fat isn't gluttony. Having too much is gluttony. Read your scriptures and you learn that. I love you guys, but I ain't dealing with this. This is, no, we ain't having this. This is the kind of game you guys want to play. We're going to put an open rebuke out there. We're going to just let you, uh, let you get a taste. I ain't having it. This isn't pride or arrogance. This is just tired frustration. If this is what it's going to come to, well, we're going to make it as public as we can. And if it means I need to embarrass you to get you to snap out of it, okay. Because if I can get one person that thinks like you to turn to Christ, I've saved my brother's soul. And that helps me out. Mostly it helps you out. I'm already, I already, I have no condemnation. But if I can get you out of it, that's a good thing. So either, you know, listen to what I say, listen to what the other watchmen say. We were called up to do this for a reason. All y'all out there playing, um, Mr. Got Rocks, I got this under, I got this, yet you don't have any content on your channels. What do you have again? Because I'm pretty sure we're the only ones that are out here doing battle. And you're doing nothing except complaining, I almost said a bad word, complaining in comment sections. That's not helping anybody. You want to benefit the kingdom? Get up off your collective and start going out there and preaching to people. Start putting out videos. That's my challenge to you. Start doing videos. Oh, I don't know how to upload. That's not an excuse. You're ridiculous. I cannot believe this kind of childishness is running around out here. Go sit down and be quiet. I got no time for you guys. There are people out there that need understanding, that need saving, that need the gospel. And none of you know the love of God salvation or the gospel the love of god john 16 17 salvation ephesians 2 8 and 9 the gospel first corinthians 15 1 through 4 go read them they're in the they're in the uh description my email address is in there by all means email me curse me and then tell me you love me mm -mm, we ain't having that go away i ain't got time for you guys i love you all bless you in jesus name And I'll see you in the next one.